Hello and welcome to National Focus for Thursday, August 29, 2024. I am Adicia Burton. In the headlines, Liat 2020 makes inaugural flight into Douglas Charles Airport. An official cocktail reception for gold medalist Thea LaFour Godson. And government to increase accommodation for essential workers. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Dominica warmly received LIAT 2020 as it made its inaugural flight into Douglas Charles Airport earlier on Thursday. An inaugural flight ceremony was held to mark the beginning of this newly formed partnership with the new regional airline. Minister for Public Works, Public Utilities and the Digital Economy, Honorable Fidel Grant, represented the Minister for Tourism, Honorable Dennis Charles Pemberton, at the event. As the representative for the Honorable Minister for Tourism, I am thrilled to be here today to celebrate the rebirth of this iconic regional airline. LIAD 2020 represents a new chapter in Caribbean aviation, one that promises to strengthen regional integration, boost economic activity, and provide a vital link for travelers among our beautiful Caribbean islands. The return of LIAD is not just a business venture, but a symbol of collective commitment to growth and prosperity to Caribbean tourism. The rebirth of the airline will enhance connectivity and increase visitor arrivals to the island. He also wished the airline continued success on future operations. So the Ministry of Tourism, DASPA, DDA anticipate that LIAD will be a solid partner to boost visitor numbers to the World Creole Music Festival, therefore supporting Dominica tourism and cultural heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in wishing LIAD 2020 a successful and prosperous journey ahead. May your wings carry the dreams and aspirations of our people to new heights. May your flights be filled with the warmth and joy that define our Caribbean spirit. Thank you and safe travels. LIAD 2020 emerges from a partnership between the government of Antigua and Barbuda and Nigerian airline Airpeace Limited and was the brainchild of Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Honorable Gaston Brown. He gave the order to make sure that we register a brand new airline, LIAD 2020 Limited. And so we did in October of 2020. It took a lot of work. It was a long journey, and that journey was actually supported by our main shareholder, Mr. Alan Onyema, and his family, who are the proud owners of the largest private airline in Nigeria, Airpeace, to bring this moment to fruition. And based on that, we also have the full support of the Prime Minister of Dominica and, Babu and um, uh, of Dominica, Mr. Roosevelt Skerritt, who publicly announced his support for this venture. Director of Operations of LIAT 2020 Limited, Mr. Arthur Senhaus, thanked all the parties involved who helped establish this partnership with Dominica. I would just like to express our greatest um, gratitude to Mr. Badwi, his team, the Ministry of Aviation in Dominica, and everybody who made it possible for us to get our certificate of operation into Dominica in time for us to conduct this flight and to make sure 
that our relationship, partnership, and all the things that we would have enjoyed probably in past times with our previous version of LIAT will be much better, especially with the advancement of the opening of the new airport in a few years. The government of Dominica is aiming to increase accommodation for essential workers in the South. National Security Minister Honorable Raven Blackmore says that's the idea behind government's investments in new facilities to accommodate fire and police officers in Grand Bay. The government has been investing over the years in building new police stations, repairing police stations, and we are given a commitment to um, building a new fire station in Grand Bay to ensure that we have the numbers, to ensure that we can house up to 20 police officers and prison and fire officers at one time. We're already making provision for a, a new fire truck, a new ambulance, and to ensure that we have adequate and appropriate accommodation for women and men alike, and ensure that we have a modern um, fire station. The Honourable Minister says it's imperative that these important institutions be located in close proximity to the people, making them easily accessible. Grand Bay is emerging as a community, and uh, we're, well, we're, we're, we're well ahead of our schedule in terms of ensuring that we build a new fire station in Grand Bay. We're also building a new court, because when we talk about access to justice, we must not only assign a one-dimensional connotation to the access of justice, ensuring that people who are grieved in various communities can have access to the court. And what better manifestation to ensure that is done is ensuring that we build courts, courts with all the functional functionalities within the comfort and zone where people, as to where people live. An official reception was held at the State House Conference Center Wednesday evening in honor of Dominica's Olympic gold medalist Thea Lafour Gadsden. President of Dominica, Her Excellency Sylvani Burton and her spouse, Mr. Burton, Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, government officials, ambassadors and representatives from embassies in Dominica, diplomats and distinguished personalities have attended the reception to celebrate Thea's historic achievement. Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, Honorable Roberts, says her warm reception by the people of Dominica since her arrival on island last Saturday shows the people's immense pride and appreciation for her. This past week has been dedicated to recognizing Thea's extraordinary sporting success and basking in the glory she has brought to our nation. Thea, you have not only made history, but you have captured the hearts of all Dominicans, and it is our privilege to honor you again this evening. I hope you felt the warmth of our Dominican people as you journeyed along the West Coast on Sunday and sensed the awe and admiration from the young athletes you engaged with this week. Every accolade, every expression of gratitude every gift and every gesture of affection you have received over the past days is a clear indication of the love and pride this nation holds for you. Thea's accomplishments marked a significant feat for the country. Your Olympic gold medal is the most prestigious prize in sports and the people of Dominica are filled with admiration at your representation of our nation on the global stage. And in spite of your physical injury, you demonstrated the true essence of what it means to choose country over self. And this indomitable spirit is yet another powerful testament of what can be achieved through hard work and dedication. It serves as a reminder to us all, our athletes, our youth, and our children, that no dream is too big, no goal unattainable, and no challenge insurmountable. Meanwhile, Thea LaFour Godson has expressed gratitude to those behind her success. And so at the Olympic Games this year, with my fabulous Olympic committee behind me, my husband beside me, my country beneath me always. And with a special angel represented 
and yellow in my hair. I jumped us into history. Please know it was not something that was individually done. I may have been the one on the runway, but it was all of you behind me, supporting me, and always in my heart. Moving forward, the Olympic gold medalist hopes to support further growth and advancement of track and field in Dominica. While I am very honored to have bring home this medal, I now feel as if it's partially my duty <laughs> to ensure that it will not be our only one and certainly not our last. Now that means that I, I do feel at this point that I will be from here on, on, from here on taking greater interest in planning the future of athletics in the country. Flo Dominica and Senior Associate Dean of AXUM, Dr. Stan White, made presentations to Thea at the ceremony. Last weekend, Prime Minister Skerritt presented Thea 7,000 square feet of land, $400,000, and a diplomatic passport each for her and her husband. Thea will be the recipient of the nation's highest award, the Dominica Award of Honor during Independence, later this year, where she will be the guest of honor. Thea Lafogadson continued her tour of the islands on Thursday, heading to Castle Bruce and the Kalinago Territory, Kalinago Barana Ote. More on these events in a subsequent newscast. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Plans are on track for the construction of a sports facility for athletes in Mahu. Olympic triple jumper Fabian Flora gave an update on the long-anticipated project during Thea's visit to the Mahu Primary School on Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to let you know that I'm going to try my best to ensure that the kids that are attending this school will have an opportunity to live their dream and to be successful in sports. In my hand is a proposal to build a long and triple jump uh, pit here in Mahu and, and discus and javelin. Mr. Flora says the ultimate goal is to ensure that the youth of Mahu can aspire to greatness and achieve their dreams. This project has been in the works for over a year. I've been aligning continuously with Paul Rev. Casanilaville, with the DAAA President Brendan Williams, and also with the President of the DOC, Billy Doctor, because I always believe that with the adequate facilities, we can give the kids, the, let's say our youth, an opportunity for them to excel in sports, and so that they can also become ambassadors of Mao and Dominica, just like Tia and myself. Flora says he's looking forward to seeing the sporting facility become a reality. This in my hand is part of the, my commitment to give back to Maho because I'm a product of Maho and I want to make sure that this project is successful and right here in Maho I want to see development of the youth and I want to see the kids participate in athletics and if, there's, if we could be inspiration for you for triple jump, long jump, any event that you like, we're going to try to achieve it right here in Maho. He told students that if they could imagine and believe in it, with the grace of God they can achieve it. Before you, today, you're looking at two Olympic triple jumpers from Maho. For the kids of Maho Primary and for the community of Maho, I just want to let you know that anything and everything is possible. Once you believe in God and you train hard and you put everything into your beliefs, you can achieve it because today, we are here today to motivate you and let you know that it is possible. 
Gentle Rest Funeral Services has made a profound donation of essential supplies to the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, DCFH, and primary health care services on Wednesday. The items are expected to make a meaningful difference in the lives of the people the institutions serve and enhance the quality of health care services. Despite the wider global challenges which have impacted our local businesses, we wish to highlight this significant and timely donation to our institutions and thank the directors for partnering with us in the delivery of health care. This donation is evidence of the beginning of a mutual relationship, one which will benefit not just our institution but our patients. A donation of microwaves, electric kettles, blender, baby scale and blood pressure apparatus were distributed at the ceremony. District Medical Officer in the Roseau Health District, Dr. Ola, extended gratitude for the timely and significant contribution. This contribution will further enhance the quality of care that we provide to our communities. The microwave and electric kettles will greatly improve the comfort and the convenience for both client and staff, facilitating quick meal preparation and hydration. This is especially important in creating a supportive environment for recovery and well-being. Moreover, the blood pressure apparatus is indispensable for our healthcare provider, allowing them to effectively monitor patients' health and ensure timely intervention. This equipment enhances our ability to deliver critical services, particularly for those with chronic conditions. The baby scale is an essential tool for assessing infant growth and development, enabling early detection of potential issues. We extend our sincere gratitude to Gentle Rest Funeral Home for their commitment to improving FK access and quality care in our communities. Your support not only enrich our facilities, but also underscore the importance of community involvement in promoting health care and wellness. He urged individuals to practice healthy living and work together to combat non-communicable diseases. As we strive to create a healthier and more vibrant community, we encourage all individuals to prioritize their well-being, be proactive and join forces in the fight against chronic non-communicable disease, CNCDs, like hypertension, diabetes, cancer, and other things. So remember, health is not a destination, but a journey. Let's embark on this journey together, taking advantage of the resources and services available at our primary health care facilities. Meanwhile, Gentle Rest Funeral Services says the support being extended is part of their civic duty and responsibility as a company and hopes to continue the program. It is our intent not only to add value in serving a need, but providing real and tangible, and tangible benefits in the respective communities they serve, and also in keeping with our civic duty. This not only demonstrates our, our commitment for the enhancement of the healthcare services, <coughs> but also of our collaboration between the health sector and gentle rest. Over the years, we have and will continue to impact and touch lives through our, through our gentle rest outreach program by providing and assisting in education, healthcare, food, and shelter when the need arises. 45 years ago today, Dominica was struck by Hurricane David, a Category 5 megastorm. Dominica was severely affected by the storm, leaving behind death and severe destruction in its path. The island was pounded with winds exceeding 150 miles per hour, leaving the city of Roseau flattened. The impact of Hurricane David highlighted the island's vulnerability to natural disasters and the need for more to be done in terms of preparedness. The level of timely and effective communication needed in disaster pre preparedness was nowhere near what it is today. 
The storm damaged or destroyed 80% of the homes, rendering 75 of residents homeless and leaving many more temporarily without shelter. Agriculture was decimated. The terrific storm downed power lines and significantly disrupted water supply. The natural environment, including Botanic Gardens and Mount Wapito National Park, were significantly affected. Regional and international partners played a key role in the restoration and return of the island to normalcy. It certainly took time, but Dominica being able to bounce back is testament to the determination and resilience of its people. That resilience came to the fore again following Hurricane Maria in 2017. Coming up next, the Creole News highlights with Jeno Jacob. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole, non Monsieur Jeno Jacob. Gouvernement Chen Yong Guan réception battait à la fongate dans le State House là au soir. Autant officier gouvernement attend des cérémonies. Dominique Chen a continué à célébrer achievement et à la fin Gadsen. On a beau Raybon Blackmore parle rep Maro avant du gouvernement qui a encouragé jeunes gens pour faire compter à. Gouvernement mette quoi devant pour bâtir à support pour pour encourager jeunes monde pour faire compter à. En pour encourager parents pour faire cette yo là pour les enfants yo. Pour encourager les enfants. Mais ça pose un domaine. Ça nous a un domaine. Nous avons un peu de fois, nous avons des parents qui parlent de la les enfants. Qui ont quitté les enfants. Les enfants tout, tout, tout cas de place. Mais si vous faites des enfants, nous avons une obligation pour doubler des enfants, pour montrer ce qui est bon, ce qui doit être, et ce qui n'est pas bon. Et bien, ce que tu as fait à Dominic, c'est pour encore les jeunes jeune gens pour dire que yo mon ça fait ça mon le faire la terre mes affaires ça fait ça le faire la terre si pas ouais là pour yo et du gouvernement Dominique ni la foi en enfants Dominique nous en marron à présent on est dans l'école neuf on est tout même là tout comme ça ça c'est encore gouvernement Dominique ni la foi en enfants d'hommes. Vous savez ce qui fait le Hawaii que Marie a passé. Et bien, bien là, nous-mêmes, nous bâtissons l'école neuf à Mao, aux enfants de Mao. Si vous allez là, vous avez un basketball court, nous bâtissons. Donc, so, tout ça, nous avons fait pour le gouvernement pour se battre pour les enfants. Donc, nous avons dit à présent, pas moi, ni une obligation pour faire certain, il y a deux bouts des enfants aussi. So, nous la nous 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 nou content pour toi et ben nous content ça nous qu'a fait un mari aujourd'hui pour toi. Il y a 45 années depuis cyclone David détruit Dominic. David te yon cyclone catégorie 5, vitesse 20, cyclone David te yon 150 lieux. Autant mon mort, ville rose te détruit et puis autant village aussi. À présent nous entend cyclone est important pour nous faire préparation. Comme Dominic Jabati, Kai et puis Hurricane Shelter qui résilient. En autant village où sa voix ces maisons sala après cyclone Maria. Cyclone David et puis Maria, c'était des leçons pour nous toutes. En nous continuer à faire préparation aujourd'hui. Gouvernement Dominique et puis le comité olympique ont un plan pour bâtir une facilité sport en village Maro. Olympique Triple Jumper Fibian Florent parlait contre le projet sala. Il fait annoncement hier à l'école Primary Maro. Il est facilité à encourager les jeunes gens Maro et puis pour tracer pour jouer sport professionnellement. Et les jeunes gens pour imaginer quoi et puis par grâce bon Dieu, y a aucun succès. Ça c'est tout à ce nouvel en Coyol. Non, Monsieur Geno Jacob, au revoir. And that was Geno Jacob with the Creole News highlights. For today's weather advisory, weak, unstable conditions as a result of lingering moisture and instability trailing a tropical wave will be affecting the area. Some cloudiness and showers can be expected throughout the day. The National Hurricane Center is currently monitoring an area of interest in the central tropical Atlantic with a medium chance of development within the next seven days. Interests in Dominica are advised to monitor the progress of this area of interest as we continue to provide the necessary updates. 
a slight reduction in dust haze concentration can be expected. However, people with respiratory sensitivities are advised to continue taking the necessary precautions to avoid complications. Slight to moderate seas can be expected in open water, with waves expected to peak near 5 feet. As we near the peak of the hurricane season, individuals are advised to take precautions to protect themselves and their families. For today's hurricane tip, seal outside wall openings such as vents, outdoor electrical outlets, garden hose bibs, and locations where cables or pipes go through the wall. Use a high-quality waterproof filler or sealant to prevent water penetration. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Adisi Burton. Thank you for watching.